Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist and it's yet another heads up video. So just another word of warning video. It's prompted by a message that we got, a really long message that we got from a guy this week. An American guy who's living in Japan, teaching English, described himself as a middle-aged guy and he told a long story about how he was at a convenience store, outside a convenience store, and some young Japanese guy was there, and the young guy spat, apparently, which is a bit rare. You don't sort of see a lot of that in Japan. You get a lot of snorting and stuff going on in Japan, but you don't get a lot of spitting, but it does happen sometimes. But anyway, this young guy spat, and our American friends said something to him, and then the Japanese young guys reacted to that, and... The American guys reacted to that and it sort of deteriorated from there and the American guy called the young guy said he was a dirty, dirty animal and the young guy got really angry and then the American guy got in his car and the young guy came over and was yelling at him and, and then the, the American guy drove off and the young Japanese guy drove off too behind him and they went around a couple of corners and then the American guy decided to pull in. There was a coal barn, a small police station and the American guy decided to pull into the police station and go in and tell the police that this young guy was following him. So he's gone in there and, and started telling the story and then the young guy's come in and he's told the story. And it ended up with the policeman, two policemen yelling at the American guy and telling him that he shouldn't be calling people names on the street and that he shouldn't be making trouble and that and then the American guy said he didn't quite understand what they were saying because he said his Japanese wasn't very good. And then they told him that he lives in Japan, he should be speaking Japanese. And, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And it, the way it ended up was that no, by the sound of it, nobody had committed a crime. So at the end of it, the police took their details and copied the, the American guy's foreigner card and sent them both on their way. But the American guy was feeling really bad because he thought that he was getting treated unfairly and that he copped a serve from you know the young guy and from the police and that the, the young guys didn't seem to cop anything from the police at all and the the end result for him though was lucky in that it hadn't deteriorated further and we've talked about this on previous videos and we've warned about this before that you just cannot get involved in any conflict in Japan. You just cannot get involved. It, it, you know, a lot of us come from cultures where if we see someone behaving badly or for whatever reason we feel we can express our opinion, we can say something, well, I'm going to tell him, you know. And a lot of us come from cultures where that sort of behaviour is sort of normal or not normal maybe, but it's more acceptable. And for a number of reasons, we just can't do it here. So... There's a number of reasons. One is that in, in Japan, maintaining the harmony is the key. And as we've talked about on previous videos, if someone else behaves badly, you know, in some of our cultures, if someone behaves badly, you can tell them they're behaving badly. In Japan, that's not seen as a civilized reaction. In, in Japan, it's seen that if someone behaves badly, that, that the way to respond to that is just ignore it. And, and you'll see it all the time, you know, somebody in the traffic here will start cutting in and out of cars. And I mean, there are decades in Japan, you know, the, it, it, the, it would be wrong to give the impression that you don't come across dickheads in Japan, because you do. You know, there are some bad, badly behaved people in Japan, but probably less than that there are in other countries, and they're probably quieter. So you don't hear them or see them as much. But they do exist, and you do come across them. You know, you might see a young guy outside the convenience store spitting on the ground, or, you know, the guy cutting in and out in the traffic. You do get that sometimes, cutting in and out in the traffic and cutting you off and hitting horns and driving too close behind you. And, you know, it does happen. It's probably less common than it might be in some other countries, but it does happen. And when it happens, you, you just have to let it go because that's what the Japanese people do. And that's why road rage sort of doesn't really happen here because you don't get two people doing that behavior you know in a lot of countries one guy starts cutting in and out like that sooner or later someone's going to call him a dickhead and wind down the window and they'll end up with a fight and then you've got two people in confrontation whereas the Japanese way of doing it is nobody says anything and they just let him do his thing 
and there's, there's no conflict. He just goes through the traffic and he does his backwards and forwards and cutting people off in and in and out and then he disappears off into the distance. And there's no conflict because nobody's calling him out on it. And you know, the, the end result is that there's no conflict. So if we, if we get involved in conflict in a situation like that, we're not seen as any better than that person is. And this, this, that's, they're all extreme examples, but this will be the same if you're in Japan and you're staying with some people or in, you're in your workplace or if you come here to study and with your, your, your fellow students or if any, sort of, any sort of situation like that where someone behaves badly. We gave an example once before of in a, in a dojo once, an old guy came into a dojo once and he, he looked at some piece of paper and it, it upset him and he ranted. He ranted and yelled and raved and carried on and stormed out and slammed the door behind him. And because that sort of behavior is really rare in Japan, it's very, very rare to come across something like that. So it was a bit of a surprise. But not one person in that dojo reacted. Nobody commented, nobody reacted. Nobody turned and said, oh, what a dickhead, nothing. Everybody just continued doing what they were doing as if it didn't happen. And that's, that's the way they consider to be the correct behavior. If you point out that that guy's a dickhead and say, oh, what a fool or something like that, that that, that makes you look bad and they'll think less of you as a result and every time we make a video like that there's a chorus of people saying that's not right they shouldn't do that they shouldn't do that that's not fair that's discrimination and and look look it's true it's true that's, that's the other aspect of it too you will get discriminated against if something like this goes down here because Japanese people tend to go and the police included, tend to support the Japanese person. If you're in a conflict with, with somebody, the Japanese person will tend to relate to the other Japanese person more than they will to you. It's just the way it is. And yes, it is discrimination, but that's just the way it is. So even if even if you're 100% in the right, whatever that happens to be, and the Japanese person's 100% in the wrong, you will still end up paying the consequences, most likely. Because the Japanese people, the Japanese police will listen to the Japanese person and they'll take their side. And yes, it's true, it's discrimination, but it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. One way to help understand this a little bit more, it's a little bit deeper than discrimination. Those of you who have been to Japan, if you com compliment, if you say to Japanese people, I love Japan, Japan's a wonderful place, you know, I love Japanese food, I, anything positive about Japan at all, there's a really good chance that Japanese people will say, thank you. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because if I come to your country and tell you I like your country, you might say, yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Or you might disagree with me, or you might say something else, but it's not real likely that you'll say thank you. And the fact that Japanese people will thank you for saying something nice about their country shows the way they see it is that is that a compliment towards their country is a compliment to them they take it very personally and it's the same as the group so there's a really good chance when when we're talking about this guy's story read the story and we're talking about it in our house and and there's a really good chance that when he when the young guy said that the the american guy had called him a dirty animal there's a really good chance that the police took that personally that the way the police felt about that was that he wasn't just saying that that young guy was a dirty animal, he was saying Japanese people are a dirty animal. Now obviously that wasn't the case, but that, that there's a very good chance that's the way the Japanese people, uh, the Japanese policemen would have uh, felt about it. Um, an example of that is, I remember years ago watching TV once with some Japanese friends, and there was a, a, a guy on TV, and he's still on TV now, some of you who've, who watch Japanese TV might, might know this guy, but he's got really big ears that stick out at the side, they really stick out, and a really round face, and the bottom line is that he has a face like a monkey, he really does, if you you took his face and superimposed it over a monkey, he's, he's, the shape of his face and his ears and the whole thing, he really looks like a monkey, right? And somebody made the mistake of saying, that guy looks like a monkey, right? And, and the, my girlfriend at the time turned to me and said, turned to me and said, do you think Japanese people look like monkeys? And I said, no, no, just that guy, that guy looks like a monkey. So he's got the ears that stick out the side and, 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 and then about a month later or something, there was something else came up and she said again, 
So do you really think Japanese people look like monkeys? It had really hung on the back of her head. And even though I tried to explain to her that, no, I don't, I just mean that guy. I mean, he's got these ears that stick out at the side and his round face. And But just the fact that, see, Japanese people are usually very careful about saying anything negative about anybody else. And then, for if a foreigner says it, that, that gives them the feeling that, that often gives them the feeling that you're criticizing Japanese people as a whole. And that helps that helps understand that the policeman's reaction to this sort of behavior as well. That this foreigner's here in Japan telling this Japanese guy how to behave in Japan. And there's the other aspect of it as well, is that you can live in Japan for 20 or 30 or 40 years and you'll still be considered a foreigner. You know, there's people in Japan that were born here who have one foreign parent and they've born here, lived here all their life. They might never have been outside Japan. They're 100% Japanese by, by nationality and by life experience, but because they've got one foreign parent, they'll always be considered to be a foreigner. And that's just the way it is. It's the way Japanese people see it. And again, and so then, you know, you're a foreigner in Japan criticizing a Japanese person or fighting with a Japanese person, making a problem, making some sort of problem, upsetting the harmony, making waves, you know? And again, yes, it's unfair. Yes, it's discrimination. And all I, yes, 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 yes. But it's the way it is. And, and really, we really have to look at this at, and remember our, our, our main goal. And what is our main goal? If your main goal is to stay in Japan, then you really have to not get into any of these conflicts or dramas because, because if it gets worse and it ends up with some sort of, some sort of offense being committed or some sort of uh, push or shove starts to happen or anything at all like that, that you could end up being charged with assault. And I mean, it could be the smallest thing, you throw something or you, you know, he pushes you, you push him back or something like that. And you could end up, you could end up with a, an offense and you could end up being deported. And that's not an exaggeration. We hear these stories all the time. And because inevitably when you hear these stories, you know, people tend to see it just from their own point of view and they go, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's, it's discrimination, it's this, that and the other and I didn't do anything. And, and I was minding my own business and suddenly I was in trouble at the police station. And, and But inevitably, if you really look at the story, they've, they've let it go down that path. Their ego's kicked in. And I mean, let's face it, with a lot of, these, a lot of that behavior, it's just ego. When it, when it gets into that deteriorating sort of thing, it's just ego, really. And you just have to let it go. Because you're not gonna change it. There are dickheads in the world. There's a good chance that guy in that car up there is, by the way he's driving. You're not gonna change it. You know, telling him he's a dickhead or getting involved in any sort of conflict. You know, now and again, someone will give you a, a bit of a dirty look here, particularly young guys, or make some comment. You just have to let it go. You, you just cannot let it go. They're not going to change. You're not going to change them being the way they are. They're not going to, you know, if you tell them they're behaving badly, they're not going to go home and think about it and go, hmm, that foreign guy was right. I do behave badly. They're not, it's not going to change anything. They're going to they're going to continue to behave in that bad way, but in the meantime, you've you've landed yourself in a world of trouble. And any trouble at all, if you get any any offence against you at all in Japan, there's a really good chance that they'll either deport you straight away or they won't let you renew your visa. So if your goal is to stay here, you definitely don't want to go down that track. And as we've talked about before, you really don't want to end up in a Japanese jail either. So, you know, there's no... There's no point in complaining. There's a lot of this stuff that we've made videos about. And, oh, no, that's not right. They shouldn't do that. And that's discrimination. And that's not fair. And you should stand up. You should stand up and protest against that. And you should do this and you should do that. Well, no, we're not going to do that because we know it's a waste of time. You know, other people can do that if they want to. If other people want to fight for their rights and they want to stand up for their, their freedoms and all that sort of stuff in Japan as a foreigner, they can do that if they want to. But, you know, we're not doing it because we think it's a waste of time. You know, we've talked before about changing things in Japan and, you know, Japanese people can't change things in Japan, even if they wanted to, which most of them don't. But even if they wanted to change things in Japan, they're not going to. And a foreigner's got no hope. You know, they'll listen. We've made a video specifically about this before. Japanese people will listen to what foreigners say. They'll go, oh, yeah, and then nothing will change. They'll even tell you they agree with you and they understand and you're right. 
and then still nothing changes. So, you know, and, and, and all those things that we think in our own countries about how, you know, if you've got the, if you've done the right thing and that, you know, the other person's at fault, that it'll all work out and you'll get some justice and you'll get a lawyer and you'll get this and you'll get that. Nah, no, you won't. No, you won't. You just cannot win that fight. The only way to win the fight is to not get in the fight. It's just to stay out of it. Just let it go. Let it go. Walk away. And it's hard. It is hard. What tends to happen? And I do feel for our American friend there because when you live here for a long time in particular, it does wear you down sometimes and you do get tired of letting things slide and letting things slide and keeping your mouth closed and there's a lot of things that are really hard about living in Japan for a foreigner and for Japanese people, but particularly being a foreigner, there's a lot of things that are really hard about living here and it does wear you down and there's some times when you're tired and you're not expecting you can just imagine our american friend there you know he's had a big day he's come out of the convenience store he wasn't expecting a drama and then he's just made a comment and it's deteriorated and suddenly he's found himself in this big drama in a police station no no way he saw that coming you know and it's easy to imagine how that could happen to you and that's why that's why this video's been made is that is that you just got to be really aware of this in japan if if you you know when when you're expecting some sort of difficult situation you can sort of mentally prepare for it but where you'll get caught out is something like this there's just a comment someone makes a comment someone else makes a comment and it sort of deteriorates from there and you've just got to recognize it really soon and walk away you know um that american our american friend there he, he he's it's really done him a favor because the, the end result was nothing permanent, you know, he, he, he didn't end up in any permanent trouble or anything. He came away feeling bad, basically. He felt he'd been dealt an injustice and it, it was unfair and he'd been discriminated against and it was a very unpleasant experience, obviously. But he's, he's walked away with no permanent consequences, so from that point of view, it was just a, a lesson, really. It was a lesson and a reminder to stay out of dramas, just don't get involved in conflict here. You know, it's just not worth it. It will end badly for you, for you. And there's a million examples of this. You, you hear it all the time. We've had we've had emails from people like this before, and they'll tell us that oh, it was just you know, it wasn't me. I wasn't doing anything. And suddenly there's this big drama, and particularly with police. You know, I've, there's a couple of stories on the internet of of people. You know, the police stop asking for their ID or something, and they oh, you, you know, you don't have a right to ask me for my ID, and you know. It goes downhill from there and it ends up with them in the police station for four hours or something, you know? And you guys have seen our dealings with the police. You know, there's a couple of videos on our on our crime emergency services uh, playlist of dealings with the police, videos of us dealing with the police. And usually, if you're polite and respectful and they want to see your ID, show them your ID, usually within 30 seconds or a minute, you'll be walking away. And it's, and it's usually a very pleasant experience. We've never had a negative experience with the police because stay out of trouble and then if for some reason we're talking to the police, they do random stops here for different reasons. If they do that, you just talk to them nicely, give them your card, give them your ID, talk to them and you know a minute later you'll be on your way again. It's all good, you know, but there's one video in particular on the internet. I'm not gonna show you guys because it's not, don't wanna encourage it. But there's this guy, he's just basically walked himself down a deep hole. He's just, someone sent us to us a while ago and said, what do you think of this? And I was just like, well, he got what he deserved. You know, show us your ID. I'm not gonna show you my ID. I don't have to. I don't have to do, I don't have to do that. Here it is, all right, here it is. And just all attitude right from the start. And it went downhill and it ended up with him spending four hours in the police station arguing about his rights and all this sort of nonsense. Whereas in actual fact, if he'd just gone along with the flow, he would have been out of there in a minute, or he wouldn't have been out of anywhere. He would have been on his way, walking down the street, continuing down the street a minute later. But instead of it taking a minute, it ended up taking hours and being a huge drama, you know? So, so just the bottom line is, guys, heads up, don't get in any dramas in Japan. If anything starts to happen, any sort of dramas at all, just walk away, walk away. Put your hands up, say, okay, okay, and walk away walk away show that you're being passive and that you're not being aggressive and that you're not having anything to do with it and just walk away and then any witnesses will be able to say that's what they saw you know if you if you indulge in any conflict at all you're gonna end up you end up paying the price you know 
Anyway, there it was. There it was. A sad reality, but nevertheless, the reality. <laughs> More videos coming soon.